Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And this is another video in the five minute GarageBand expert series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for mixing and recording in GarageBand in 30 days. This video, we're talking about vocal EQ. In many genres, vocals are the center part of the song. If you want to have a great sounding recording and a great sounding mix, you have to have a great sounding vocal. And a great vocal EQ is gonna be a huge part of that. But it doesn't change the goals and the approach for how we EQ. With EQ, we always have three goals. Minimize the bad, highlight the good, and make space for every source. Now, in this video, we're going to be doing those in reverse order. We're going to start by making space for every source. Then we're going to highlight the good, and then we're going to minimize the bad. And if we do those three things, we're going to have a great vocal EQ that's going to sound clean and professional and natural. So let's go ahead and dive into this example, and let's listen to the vocal, how it currently sounds without any EQ or compression on it at all. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home You never get over it oh. So it's a good vocal recording, nice and clean, but I think it could be a little bit brighter, could cut through the mix a little bit more, and we can certainly cut out some of the mud that's just kind of making it sound not great. Okay, so let's solo this vocal, and we're gonna start by making space for every source. And what I mean by that is, this vocal recording doesn't have low end in it that we need, but it might have some low end in the recording that added in with other recordings in the song add up to get in the way of frequencies that actually do need that low end. So I'll play just a little bit of that and notice how there's just a little bit of frequencies kicking around down here in the 50 and 100 hertz. It's like they're calling your name on the way back. You see that right there? Just a, a bit of a bump. We want to get rid of that. That's not helping the vocal sound as we're hearing it, but it's in the recording. So we're going to start by just setting a high pass filter. And we're going to go up until we're starting to notice it cut into frequencies we do like in the vocals. And then we're just going to scale it back just a little bit. So let's listen to this in solo here. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get over it. Oh. So on this vocal, somewhere around 192, I'm not really noticing it at all. Uh, we can listen to it soloed and bypassed real quick. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. Yeah, I don't lose anything when that's on, but we're clearing out those frequencies that will help the bass guitar and the kick drum and other low frequency sources. Now, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to add, highlight the good. We're going to add frequencies that sound good to us from this vocal. Uh, and to be clear, you can't add frequencies. They can't come out of nowhere. So they have to be in the recording in the first place. There's definitely some high frequencies here. We're just going to highlight them a little bit. We're going to boost them a little bit. So I like to do that in the context of the mix. So we're gonna unsolo. We're gonna listen to this vocal in the mix. We're gonna find a frequency that sounds good to us. Uh, with vocals, I often start with just a high shelf. I think adding those bright frequencies is a great way to get it cut, to cut through the mix. I start with that. Sometimes I might change it. I don't do it on every vocal. The only thing I do on every vocal is that high pass filter. But a, a nice high shelf sometimes works. I would say most of the time I end up doing it on my vocals at least a little bit. So let's listen to it in the context of the mix here. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get over it. Oh. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get over it. Oh. All right, so. The way I went about that is I set it up pretty extreme. I found a frequency that sounded good and then I dialed it back to about a half or a third. I think I was about 10 or 11 decibels boost, found the frequency that was sounding good where I was really noticing it, and then I scaled that way back. We don't wanna do super extreme moves here because that's gonna sound very unnatural, but listen to this with and without this shelf on. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. So it's subtle now, but it just lets that vocal cut through a little bit more. That's what we're going through, subtle changes that help the vocals cut through a little bit more, sound natural, but sound really, really great. Okay, the third goal, the third thing we're gonna do is minimize the bad. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna solo this vocal and we're gonna just sweep the frequencies until we hear things that are consistently not sounding good to our ears. And then we're just gonna cut them just a little bit. So we're gonna solo this vocal. We're just gonna pull up a band here, set our cue kind of high, and we're just gonna sweep these frequencies while it's playing. 
you can already see kind of a bump around here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we end up doing something around there, but don't rely on the analyzer. Use your ears and, and determine if it sounds good to you in your ears. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get it over it. Oh. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get it over it. Oh. Yeah, that's there's something wonky right there. You cut that out. It's like they're calling your name on the way. Just sounds smoother. And we're not cutting it all the way out. We're just kind of minimizing it, right? All right, let's find it. I, as I was painting, I heard some more somewhere around that 1K mark. So we're going to do one more sweep and see if we hear anything else here. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get it over it. Oh, it's like they're calling your name on the way back home. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. Okay, the last thing we want to do is make sure we balance the volume of our EQ so that this EQ isn't making it louder or quieter. It, it looked like it was about balanced because we're adding a little bit here and we're cutting a little bit here. It seems to be almost canceling each other out, but let's just see. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. So volume-wise, we're about the same with and without the EQ. Okay, let's listen to this in the context of the mix and see what we notice. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get it over it. Oh. You notice how every time it kicks on, you, it just cuts through the mix a little bit more. It's just a little bit clearer. It's not crazy. It's all subtle changes. It sounds very natural, but we're just making space for every source, highlighting the good, and then minimizing the bad. If you do those three things, you're going to have a great vocal EQ. Uh, if you want to go a little bit deeper with EQ, I have a free EQ cheat sheet. EQ is definitely the tool to take your mixes from dull and muffled to huge and clear. So be sure to download my free EQ cheat sheet. I'll link to it in the description below. And if this video is helpful for you, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video.